Okay, now keep in mind you've gotten familiar now with using the Z table and we know that when we draw our curve we usually stop at negative 3 and positive 3 standard deviations but we could use the table for like negative 3.49 we could even use to the left of our negative 3 but that's kind of where our table tops off so what if I want something that's even smaller what if I want something that's less than negative 3.49 well, hopefully you saw that note at the bottom of the table that says, oh, in that case, then go ahead and use 0 .0001. Really, there are values, but they're smaller than that. But for our sake, we're just going to use that number in all cases. For negative 10, for negative 20, we're going to use 0 .001. Same thing holds for the upper end. Our curve, we tend to stop drawing at about positive 3. The table goes up to 3.49, but if we want something even bigger than 3.49, then that note at the bottom of the table says, go ahead and use 0.9999 for area to the left of that. doesn't matter how big, how much bigger than 3.49, we're going to be using 9999. Okay, so here are the steps I use when I'm asked to find area or probability. I always draw the curve first. You don't have to draw it. You won't be tested on drawing it to find probability or area, but I gotta tell you, it gives me a great visual. And when I draw it, I usually just make sure I center it over zero and that's about it. But the next thing I do with my drawing is I mark where that Z-score is that I'm looking up. And we know where zero is and whatever our Z-score is, we're focused on the bottom being a number line. So I can ballpark where that Z-score would be at the bottom. And then I shade. That's the important part for me because we're not always asked for area to the left. Sometimes it's area to the right. Sometimes it's between. So the shading is always a good reminder for me as to what I have to do because Ultimately, we could start with looking up the z-score, but because I've drawn that picture and shaded, I'll know that sometimes I'm going to have to do some sort of math on the table numbers so that I can actually find the area or probability I'm being asked to find. And so now that we're good at finding numbers on the table, I mentioned that sometimes there's calculations that have to be done. So in this case, remember, our table only provides the area to the left of a z-score. And if we want anything else, then we have to do some sort of calculations. And so what I've done is this table where there's four scenarios and how we would be using the table. So like in case one, if we're asked to find the area below a z-score, then when I shade, I'll just shade to the left of that z-score. And because this is how the table works, I don't have to do anything. I just look up a number on the table and that's my answer. I just answer with the value inside the table as is. But for case two, what if instead of finding area below a z-score, we're asked to find area above a z-score? So when I draw my bell-shaped curve and mark a line for my z-score, I would be shading to the right. And in this case, I'm going to take 1 minus whatever value I find inside the table. And the reason I'm doing that is it's the complement, right? If we know 100% of the curve is or if the curve gives us 100%, it's one, and I don't want the area to the left, I want the opposite, I want the area to the right, then I'm taking the complement. Case three, I'm asked to find the probability of a value being between two z-scores, so obviously I'll shade in between those two z-scores, and then I'll look them up in the table, and once I have those two table values, I'm going to take the big number minus the small number. And really important, these are those values that are inside the table. I'm not subtracting z-scores. I'm subtracting the two numbers I found from the middle of the table. And the last case scenario would be when you're asked to find a value that is smaller than a z-score and a value that is larger than a z-score. You know, what's the probability of, you know, you get in free to Disneyland if you're under two and, I don't know, over 85? I don't think they let you in if you're old enough <laughs> at Disneyland. But if I was shading, then I'm taking the z-scores and basically I'm shading to the closest edge. I'm going to shade a left and a right side. And so what I'm going to have to do is add the values from both of the cases above. 
I'm going to find area to the left, an area to the right, and add those. And then the only thing is, don't forget, for this particular class, I like us to take that area in the middle of the table and change it to a percent with one digit past the decimal because we have just found probability. But that's particular to me and not necessarily all instructors. And so also remember, since we know that the total area under the curve is one, that means the middle of the curve cuts the area in half. So I'll have half on the left, half on the right, or basically 0.5 on each side. So if I was to shade the left half of the curve without even using the table, I know that the area or probability of being below zero, less than zero, is 0 0.5. I mean, we, the table would give me 0 0.5000, but it's the same thing. And then there's the mirror image of that, the opposite, which would be if I shaded above the center, above zero, the probability of being greater than zero standard deviations away from the mean, the probability is going to be 0.5 or a half. And so the nice thing about this is it really helps me if I'm um, shading, when it comes to my answer, I know that if I shade more than half, then the area is going to be more than half. The area is going to be more than 0.5. Same thing goes with the information below that if I'm going to be shading less than half of the curve, then the area is going to be less than 0.5, less than half. 